Tonight's resources are all um, about celebrating language learning that has taken place throughout the year. So we're going to be revisiting previous language and some grammatical learning all in a fun and dynamic way, all themed around a summer luau party. So hopefully you will find these resources good fun and your children will find it fun. I've been doing some with the children in my class and they've been enjoying them so far and they've, they've got a lot out of it and it's been nice to do some of these activities especially with the lovely weather we've had this week. Uh, for network members you can access the resources through on the VLE in the network meetings and webinar folder and the resources that we're going to show you tonight our original resources are also part of our, um, uh, our, our part of our scheme of work. For non-network members, you can find the resources through the Primary Languages Network website. That's our Active Lingo shop, uh, and there's a small fee if you wish to download and purchase any of the resources that I'll be showing tonight. Okay, so the theme is uh, Summer Luau Party resources. will be think coconuts, cocktails, limbo, flower lays, and full-on tiki party. We'll be looking at four main resources tonight. There's a Let's Limbo resource, which is to do with identifying masculine and feminine singular nouns in French and Spanish. We'll be looking at how to design some Hawaiian lays in class, revisiting colours, looking at word order, adjectival agreement, and the kind of post modification of adjectives in the foreign language that comes after the noun. We'll be, we've got a, con, a conjugating coconut shy and looking at uh, conjugating present tense verbs in foreign language which is good for your older children and the final resource we've got tonight is a holiday postcard uh, we'll be looking at complex sentences and some dictionary work if you do have any questions and you're listening live uh, if you just want to type them and um, i'll have a look at the end if we've got any questions and hopefully i'll be able to answer them for you we'll have a bit of time for that at the end okay so the first resource I want to share with you tonight, I've titled it Let's Play Limbo, okay? Really a traditional kind of Hawaiian tiki luau party game. And as you can see from my picture down here, I've been doing it with some of the children in class already. This, with this um, activity, you will get the following resources. I'll just put them up on my screen here. So there is a masculine feminine limbo PowerPoint which has got some suggested activities and an explanation of the tasks that you can use in class. And it's also got a writing worksheet which you can use, which has got uh, the French, uh, Spanish determiners on there for masculine and feminine, French determiners, and it's got a blank one. So if you want to do plural, singular determiners, or you want to do something else with this activity, you can print that off and put on your own determiners and um, the children can use it in class, okay? So, this activity is a way to practice identifying masculine and feminine nouns in a fun kind of creative way uh, and i found that, that what i've done so far the children have really enjoyed it um, you can use any nouns you want so currently i've been doing the hunger giant story from the ready-made spanish uh, year free scheme of work and we've been learning the word some of the words for the breakfast foods that the giant has so the way I introduced this to the children was I gave them the breakfast foods without a determiner. So they couldn't tell whether they're masculine or feminine from the determiner. And I asked the children, to, we, we talked about masculine and feminine in the foreign language. They are familiar with that because we've kind of covered it before and looked at it a little bit. And I asked the children to use dictionaries to find out if the words that I had displayed on the whiteboard from the Hungry, Caterpillar, uh, from the Hungry Giant story were masculine or feminine so the children looked in the dictionaries for me and they checked whether it said the femme or the mass next to it and i gave them the hawaiian luau sheet and they wrote them in the correct column in their books then i got the children to be language detectives and i asked them could they spot any pattern or do they remember the pattern from last time that we looked at and in spanish most nouns that end in a tend to be feminine uh, although there was one exception to the rule that we discovered when we were looking at it which is milk in spanish milk cake which was quite interesting for children. So we learned that not all the, all the word patterns follow the rules. And once we'd done that and kind of established a rule for masculine and feminine nouns in, in uh, Spanish, then I took the children outside. And you can see this is one from actually my lesson today with the year threes. I set up two limbos. 
really, really easy to do. If you've got two meter sticks, just stick a piece of paper to them with your two determiners. So in this case, it was one and una. Or you could have, you know, your um, definite articles if you want to, could you, L and la, or whatever it is that suits your, your topic in class at the time. But I got, I got the children to line up and I said, the, I said a word in Spanish, the, the food that they've been learning from the Hungry Giant story, and the children had to go underneath the correct limbo. And they really enjoyed doing that. There are a few ways that you could do that. You could get the children to set them up in groups and give them meat sticks to put at you, and they could then lead it themselves and feel the confident doing it. You could get one child to be the leader and put them into groups of, I don't know, 10 or 8 or whatever. You could even have a whole class team limbo competition where you had two teams and to see which team can go onto the right limbo the most times. Um, and um, they could even do it. You could, I was thinking about this. You could even print off the sheet and have it on tables. And if you said a word, one sheet between two, they could point to the right limbo just to make, see who could get there first. I always call that game quick touch whenever I play it. Who, you know, who's the fastest to touch the right one? But I'm, probably, I'm sure all teachers that play that one probably have their own name for it. And another thing that I thought that you could do with this, that if you wanted to print off some pictures of the, um, the nouns that you've been learning in class or the children have been learning in class, you could print off some small pictures and print off a giant limbo, uh, a large limbo uh, sheet and get the children to sort the pictures into the right columns. So it's just another way that you can do it. Uh, the children that I've been teaching this week have really had loads of fun in this, especially with the nice weather. So I'm hoping that for year threes or year fours, or even to revisit for year fives and sixes, that they should really enjoy doing this task, especially the nice weather that we've got. I've really enjoyed doing it with the year threes, and I'm thinking I might even do it as a fun lesson for my year sixes, especially after the week that we've had this week. Okay, second resource that I'm gonna show you tonight is called Aloha Lays. Okay, um, so a take on a traditional Hawaiian lay. With that resource, I'm just gonna get up here. You have got a PowerPoint about Hawaiian lays, uh, in French and in Spanish, and they both come with sound files from native speakers. Included in the PowerPoint is uh, a list of uh, a list of things that you need to make uh, your own Hawaiian lays in class, and some instructions in the foreign language for how to make your Hawaiian lays, and also uh, so a little quiz where children can check their adjectival agreement whether. Uh, which is the correct spelling of the colour to go with the word for flower in French or Spanish. Um, this is a good task just for revisiting colours. Okay. So the way I did this with the children was uh, we revised our colours first of all, and then I, get, I just drew a little simple template of a flower and photocopied it lots of times. And then the children cut out the flowers uh, in a variety of different colours. I put some card on tables. Then the children wrote the colours on each flower just to practice writing them. So there's a good uh, opportunity there for incidental writing in foreign language. The children that I were teaching, we've only done, only done Spanish since year three. So it was enough for them just to write the colours on the flowers. You could extend that if you wanted to and get them to do dictionary work and find something of that colour and write the word on the flower, couldn't they, to make it a bit more interesting and to challenge them a little bit more. Once they cut out all the flowers of the children I made, we did a little word order uh, sequencing activity. So the children sat in pairs and they put like a big A3 book from the library between them. And then they'd both have the sets of flowers and they'd say across the table the colours. So it was a good opportunity to get the children to say the colours and the child opposite had to put the, the flowers in the sequence of colours that the other child was saying and then they would check them. That was quite a fun game as well that they liked to do. Then we made the Hawaiian lays. Okay, um, and the children all got to wear them, and you can see here, here's one example of one of the children's lays that they've made in class. And then they went round in class, we practiced, I, well I practiced with the children describing a lay all together, so we looked at a few on the whiteboard. I bought one from, a, from, from I think it was from Matterland, it was only like 99p in the party section, and we, we practiced describing my lay first of all, and going round and saying what, what colours I was wearing. And then the children went round and described what colours they were wearing to the partners. So you can see the two girls here, which are covered with a tiki mask, uh, describing their lays to each other in class while some of the children were just finishing up. They really, really enjoyed this activity. And even the class teacher of that class came up to me and said, you know what, I'm really glad that they've done this because we don't often get the opportunity to 
fit in all the craft work we'd like to do and DT and art work. So it's really nice that we've been able to do that in a cross-curricular way in a foreign language section. Um, if you want to take that a bit further, I did it with this class, but you could look at adjectival agreement and word order in the foreign language. So you could describe the flowers and flower is a feminine word in French and Spanish. So you have to change the colours slightly uh, to match the word for flower. So if you wanted to, you could get the children to describe the flowers rather than just say the colours and to make it a little bit more challenging for children who are ready for that to do the adjectival agreement and changing the word ending in the foreign language. There are two writing sheets that the children can use with this activity. I'm just going to get them up on my screen now. There's one that's just a very simple writing sheet where the children can practice colouring in their own Hawaiian lei and then they can describe it in the foreign language so they can say my Hawaiian lei is red, yellow, blue, etc. There is one that's slightly more challenging, a little bit more difficult for those people that want to look at adjectival agreement. And this one just says, uh, um, I'm wearing a Hawaiian lei. It has a flower that is yellow, that is red, that is purple, that is white. So then they have to make sure that the colour matches the uh, noun, the, the feminine noun there. Just got some examples of some of the work that my children did in class for that. Okay, so you can see here we've got one of the lays that the children made and we've got some examples of the writing that they did. And again, it was a nice kind of afternoon activity that they enjoyed doing on a, a summer's day uh, when the sun was shining outside. And I just put on some Hawaiian music in the background while they were colouring in and writing their sentences for that. And they really enjoyed that activity. And we got quite a lot out of it. It was a good chance for them to revisit colours and practice their colours, which we've not kind of covered since before Christmas properly. And it was nice them to have an opportunity to go around class sharing their colour lays with each other. So the third activity that I've got for you tonight is our tiki cocktails, tiki fruit cocktails. Okay. Whenever I think of Hawaiian themed or luau parties, I always think of cocktails. And it was something that I thought the children would really enjoy doing too. I've done this this week with, and last week with my year five children. They'd earlier in the year done fruit and vegetables and buying them from a the market. So I thought this fit quite nice with that to revisit that language that they'd already learned. For this resource, you have got a cocktail PowerPoint and included on that cocktail PowerPoint, is a recipe for making a cocktail in the foreign language uh, with sound files from native speakers and you've also got an, um, a key verbs list so our imperative verbs there and we've also got a list of things that you need to make that cocktail okay the way i did this with my children this week i with my year fives, I showed them this sheet at the top, if you can see the one that I'm pointing to there, that says Salida de Sol, um, the, the recipe for the cocktail. And the first thing I did, that I gave all the children in pairs a copy of the recipe and just asked them to read through it and see if they could kind of work out what it was or what it meant, what was it, what was it, what were all the words in there. And we shared some ideas and the children did recognise that, oh yeah, it's 15 millilitres of orange because they recognised the word orange and they could remember that piña was pineapple. So that's quite nice. And they kind of like were language detectives and worked quite a bit out. Then the children, uh, then I gave them dictionaries and they had to try and work out the meaning of the ingredients from, uh, from using dictionaries there to help them. Uh, I also did before the children uh, began to translate the whole uh, text. We also looked at this slide from the PowerPoint. So we looked at some of the verbs there and we looked at some of the words and we did some actions for the verbs once the children had worked out what they were. And we played a few games to practice those verbs, so Simon says, etc. And we compared them to imperative verbs in English, that they're the bossy verbs. And then the children did it in pairs where they said a bossy verb to each other and the other child had to do the action for it. And they were really good at coming up with the actions because I found it really difficult to think of an action for use and measure. But they come up with some quite original ones. So I'm sure the children in your class will do it too. So once they've translated the text, there's a couple of ways that you could use that. The children could then maybe make that cocktail if you brought the ingredients in. Orange juice, uh, cranberry juice and pineapple juice and a slice of lime. So that'd be a nice thing to do and they could do it in kind of like a performance for the rest of the class. And get them in groups to practice that. 
uh, practice performing it, listen to the native speaker sound files, and then perform it to the rest of the class and maybe bring in a few ingredients for the children to practice it out in their own kind of cocktail masterclass. With the children that I did, there is um, a format, or, um, a worksheet uh, provided with this activity where the children can design their own cocktail, okay? I got, we talked about changing the recipe to um, a recipe of their own in kind of like that talk for right kind of style fashion, taking a familiar text and adapting it and changing it. So you can see here some examples of the work that the children did in my class, which they really enjoyed doing, uh, writing out their own cocktail um, recipe, ingredients and recipe lists. And, you know, a lot of them were using dictionaries for this because they just, they just had that kind of natural inclination that they wanted to look for their own ingredients and their own things to put in it. Some of the children put in like, ginger and lots of unique pomegranate seeds and interesting ingredients. Uh, that they were looking for in the dictionary. So it was really good fun that, that, that they were looking for the cocktails. To be honest, the thing that they enjoyed most, as I said to them, they could pick any name that they wanted. Um, so they might have wanted Blue Lagoon, etc., cetera, um, or whatever name they wanted, Sunny Beach. I told them to keep it like a beach themed um, theme uh, for the cocktail name. Uh, this person's obviously gone for Unicorn now, they've done a Unicorn cocktail. I must be thinking of dragons and unicorns that they've done uh, just like the Christmas. Uh, but they got a lot out of that, so that was a fun uh, activity. I've told this class that next week we're going to make cocktails, so I promise them that I'll buy them all the all lots of different juices next week. This idea originally came from I did it when I was a year five teacher a few years ago, and we were looking at capacity in maths, and we were looking at measurements and converting measurements from liters to milliliters, and the children really enjoyed when we did it then, and we made a class cocktail book. So. I'm hoping to put all the children together into a little recipe book that the children can have and maybe they could take it in terms of taking it home and try and make one of the recipes in Spanish and show it to the parents, which is quite a nice way to share the learning with parents at home. Um, and that next week we'll be able to make them in class and they'll be able to do performance of different groups making their cocktails. That should be good fun, the cocktail tasting class. And here's a few more examples of work that children did. So you can see here we've got some different cocktails. They look very nice and we've got some examples here with the children translating the work that they did in class. Okay. So next resource I want to take you to tonight is our conjugating coconut chai. One of the things that first came to my mind when I was thinking of Hawaiian luau, one of the many things that came to my mind including flip-flops and describing Hawaiian shirts and having a flip-flop throwing competition with the foreign language words on etc was a uh, conjugating coconut shy. So this is an activity that you could, I would imagine doing with your upper key stage two children, year five, year six, depending on where they're at with the foreign language learning, or possibly something that you might want to do with your key stage three uh, during the summer term. So this activity is all to do with present tense, uh, uh, conjugating a present tense verb in the foreign language. With this activity, there is a conjugating coconut shy PowerPoint, which has got the verb conjugations of a present tense verb in the foreign language. And it's also got a blank coconut shy worksheet attached to that which your children can use for adding their own verb conjugations on. They can print that off and add it once you've kind of introduced the main activity. Also included with that is a conjugating coconut matching card game. So we've got the verb to throw in French and Spanish. Okay. Uh, this is it editable, so it's on. You can download it as a Word document. So you can put on whatever verb you're working on. If you're at key stage three and you're working at future tense, past tense, and you want to put on a verb on the coconuts there, um, there is a blank one that you can use. It you can just print off and write on and photocopy, or you can type over this and edit it and put your own verbs on. But you have got a matching game there where you can print off uh, the verbs and match the English with the Spanish children play a pairs game with that. So first thing I'd do with this as a teacher is I'd probably introduce the coconut shy to the children. My children in year five and six have already looked at a couple of present tense verbs, especially we've recently done uh, the verb to do and the verb to play after Christmas when we were looking at sports. So my children already know and and 
they've already they're already familiar i'd say i wouldn't say they know them uh, sufficiently yet but they're already familiar with that concept of verbs changing in the foreign language and that we change the ending and in the case of spanish we don't always need to use the pronoun there because you can tell who's doing it by the by the beginning of the verb so i would introduce this with a few actions get the children to see if they can work out who's doing it if they can remember any of the pronouns from that i previously taught them and then we'd go through those and practice them and maybe do the actions for each one and kind of do like mining games, Simon says, all those kind of games where you get them to respond, etc. Then there is a conjugating coconut shine. Now you could either print this off large and cut out the coconuts and put them on the board or you can display it on your screen. And I imagine again playing that game of like quick touch with the children. So get them in teams at the class and only introduce it with whole class level and have two children come up to the board and you might say it in the in English, so I throw, uh, you throw plural, they throw, and the children have got to turn around and be the first one to touch the correct, the corresponding co coconut to get the point for their team. You could also print off this page and give it children one between two so that they could print off, uh, so that they could play the game in pairs where you say it, or they could even play it in threes, but they where one, one child says it and the other two have got to find it, the corresponding coconut. Um, I really liked a game that one of our um, language teacher shared was Andrea, where when she was doing the verb jugar, she put all the English conjugations of the verb onto a dice, and she put all, she had all the Spanish conjugations of the verb on a sheet, and the children would roll the dice, and then they'd have to match the correct Spanish one with the one that was rolled on the dice. So uh, that was, I thought that was quite a good idea too, that I'd like to try and do with the children in my class and make it into a bit of a game. I'd also like to use that matching uh, game, that uh, the children can cut out and they can play that kind of pairs game with them, they can turn it over. I've not actually got around to doing this yet. I'm hoping to do it with my year sixes, probably after half term in the weeks that are coming, just to revise conjugating verbs again. What I'd like to do with the children when I get them to do it is to see if they can apply the rule to a new verb that I give them. So once you kind of practice with I throw uh, a ball, so we can see it there, we've got it in French, I throw a ball and in Spanish, that the children can then apply the endings to a different verb. So I might do something like I speak, uh, I speak Spanish, you speak Spanish, etc. and see if they can put the, because that's an AR ending verb, so it matches the lanfar in Spanish. And then they can put the O, the AS, the A, the Amos, the Ice, the and on the end of that verb and see if they can apply that rule to a different verb which is kind of taking it to the next level then which is what they'll kind of start looking at a bit more i imagine at key stage three on those verb rules to different verbs then and if you really wanted to go to town with this you could actually make your own coconut shy uh, one of the schools where i worked at a few years ago actually going back a few years 10 to 12 we did our own version of the olympic games but we did an alternative olympics and we had things like, uh, we had a limbo game there where the children got so many points uh, for going under the lowest limbo or the second lowest, third lowest. We had a coconut shy and we had lots of kind of like fun activities going on. We had horse riding where they were on those toy horses and jumping over hay bales and things. So I think if you wanted to go to town with this, you could even make a real uh, coconut shy outside, especially if you've got summer fair or summer sports day going on with those kind of activities. It'd be really good fun and get them to try and hit the right coconut. If you put the signs on them for the, the conjugations on the coconuts, the children could try and like, knock off the correct coconut with a, with a bean bag that, that corresponds to what you'd said. So I thought that'd be quite a fun game there. So the final resource that I'd like to show you tonight is a beach postcard. So um, for this one, I've just done some recently with year six. You can see here one that they've designed there. And I have to thank Joanne Hornby for this idea because I remember her doing it at school that we worked at together last year and I thought it was a really good idea and I couldn't resist sharing it with you and using it and developing it a little bit more. So year six earlier in the year have done all about their likes and dislikes and their favourite things. So this was a good opportunity to use, uh, to revise saying what they like or what they love doing and linking it to a beach theme. For this resource, you have got a um, postcard PowerPoint. 
and it's got one of our alien beach scenes there so you might recognize characters from uh, from our alien family with all the alien characters doing something else that they love to do when they go to the beach so they like to drink a fruit cocktail they like to eat an ice cream they like to swim in the sea they like to play with a beach ball and they like to sunbathe and there's also a um, word back to support children when they're writing their own complex sentences in the foreign language now, when I did this with the children in class, I first of all, I had to establish what a postcard was with some of the children. There's quite a lot of children who didn't know what a postcard was. And I think in our uh, kind of modern times of kind of social media and technology, postcards aren't sent as much anymore, are they? So there was a few children who didn't know what they were. So I had to explain what a postcard was and how I would have sent them back to school if I went on a holiday when I was younger or back to my friends and family. So first of all, we looked at how to say I like or I, um, or I love in the foreign language. And we looked at some of the sentences on the PowerPoint down here, and we linked it to their SPAG knowledge. So these sentences were starting with, when I go to the beach with a subordinate clause, uh, I like to, etc. and these are the different things that we like to do. We listened to the sound files from the native speaker, and the children had to work out what was being said. To be honest, they found that quite easy because they've got the pictures there and the visual reference and using their prior knowledge of Spanish. It was a really good kind of confidence booster for them that they could kind of be language detectors and work all that out. So once we've done that, we got them to do, again, do some drama games. And I put the children in groups and they had to do a freeze frame of their beach scene. Um, where they'd act it out to the class saying what different things they like to do on the beach, um, which they really enjoyed doing. And it, it was a nice kind of, we actually only did this this Wednesday afternoon, so it was quite nice actually that they could, that I could take them outside after they had the sax exam and do something kind of separate from it. And we did a bit of drama and acting outside where they acted out the beach scene and they performed it to the class. And then some of the children managed to get their postcard done too. Uh, as you can see from this example here. And again, we use dictionary work to create their own um, postcards. And the children would then use dictionaries to check any words that they wanted to do. So things like, oh, I like to build a sand castle, as you can see here. Or I like to go, I like to go surfing. Um, we've got a few more examples here. So this girl, she likes to swim underneath the sea. Uh, you can link it as well if you've done prepositions in the foreign language. Uh, we've we'd done prepositions previously with the Dragons and Unicorns unit. So the children, I, I encourage them to use their prepositions to say, like, I like to sit underneath an umbrella on the, on the beach. I like to sunbathe on a towel. Okay. Um, but you can have that conversation with your children in class. On the PowerPoint on the third slide, we've purposely put noun or prepositional phrase. That's quite open to the children, what they want to put there. Uh, when I was discussing that with the children, I said, well, you might have a preposition of the phrase if you're saying where you do something. So, you know, if you like to eat um, chips while sat on the sand, if you like to eat an ice cream underneath the umbrella, if you like to eat, uh, read a book in the shade, etc. So we talked about that. Or they might say the thing that they're doing the action to. So they might have a noun phrase like, I like to eat a beautiful ice cream, etc. And they could have the adjective in do the foreign language sentence as well, okay? So that was just a nice, really fun activity that the children could do. Uh, and there's a few examples there uh, of the work that the children did in class. There's one thing I forgot to mention actually earlier on, when I was talking about the Hawaiian ladies, I think I kind of brushed over this a little bit, but on the PowerPoint side there, there is some instructions as well for making uh, the Hawaiian lay. So that might be something that you want to do with older children as well, where you want to give them those instructions. I didn't give this to my year threes. I think I read it out briefly and maybe talked about it with them. But with older children, I might actually give them that, those set, that set of instructions and give them the materials that they need and see if they can work out from the instructions how to make the Hawaiian lay. And that'd be kind of, you could even make that into a competition, couldn't you? But for DT competition, which group can follow the instructions to make the Hawaiian lay? Because some of it's not as easy as you think, because you do have to cut the straw into segments of about two centimeters and put a segment between each flower. If they don't do that, as you can see I've got on this flower here where they've got the piece of straw between each flower. If they don't put that straw between each uh, flower on the, on the Hawaiian lake, then all the flowers will just fall down into 
what into like one point at the bottom because they've not got anything there to separate them. So I forgot to mention that earlier on, but that's something that you might want to do with older children as well as kind of print them off, do some things with those instructions, maybe take the numbers out of the instructions and give them to the children cut up and ask them to put them in the right order, see if they can work out what order they go in. They could look at for identify the imperatives for verbs there as well. You could get them to use different colours to highlight nouns, conjunctions, imperative verbs, etc. things like that in the foreign language, see if they can identify them. So it'd be a really nice activity that they could pull apart from a textual level, although it's something quite simple, and you could get a lot out of that and do a lot with them. Uh, to be honest, I've not done that yet, but it might be something that I'll do with the children as I'm talking and thinking about it in class. That'd be a good idea to do with my year six children. Again, I think they'd enjoy that. And as well, the year sixes said to me the other day when, when I asked them, are they enjoying doing the postcard? They said to me, well, yeah, I can't remember uh, the last time that I got to do colouring. I think it was year one. So I think it's nice for the older children sometimes to do some of those craft activities as well, especially the year sixes when they've come to the end of the SATS period and you know they come into the summer term. So um, that's all the resources I've got to show you tonight. Not as kind of heavy grammar wise as the dragons and unicorns, some of the things in there. I'm hoping that you'll see that the resources I've shown tonight are just a real big kind of celebration, reinforcement, revisiting of the things, previous learning and previous grammar that children have done in class already. Um, for me, I've really enjoyed doing them so far. I always try and use the resources in class before I talk about them on our webinars, just so I can give it that kind of personal experience. And so far, the children have really enjoyed doing all of them. The year threes and love those Hawaiian way, uh, lays. And um, my year fives has really enjoyed making the cocktails and they're really looking forward to making them in class next week after they've done their own cocktail recipes. The year sixes have really enjoyed doing the postcards and they've got a lot out of active, doing kind of like a freeze frame of postcards where one at a time kind of moved with that and performed their little sentence from their postcard. They could also use a bit of ICT with that. I know I've talked about pic collage before, but they could take a picture of their postcard, couldn't they? Or use one of the um, one of the talking apps and add sound to their postcards. There is a good app that I'm just currently in the process of trying to get downloaded to the iPads at school, and it's an app called Thinglink. And it's where the children can take a picture of a postcard on the iPad, and then they put a box on the postcard, and each dot becomes a different recording of them saying their sentence. So I'm hoping to develop that further so that using this Spingling cap where they can act out their sentence, do a little performance of it and record it. And then you can embed that within your Facebook page or your school website. And when people click on the dots on the children's work of the postcard, it comes up with a little video of them. So I'm hoping the computer technician at the school can get that app put on there over the next week so I can get that done too. And that should be a really good fun idea for them to practice that language from the postcard um, again. Um, I'm just going to have a little look here if I've got, we've got any questions. I'm not sure where to look for the questions. Hmm. Okay, if there's any questions, I will speak to Janet and Peter and I'll ask them if there's some way that we can get back to people about those questions either via email or maybe we can add it on to the end of this webinar when it goes onto YouTube uh, later on just to answer any questions that you've you have. I uh, hope you've enjoyed all the resources tonight. I'd just like to say thank you to Emily for her French translation to looking through all my PowerPoints. Thank you to Irene for uh, all the Spanish uh, voice files for the, for the uh, PowerPoints. Uh, thank you to Anna for her great illustrations which the children really enjoyed seeing in class and also thank you for Catherine for helping me organise the webinar tonight. Uh, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy the resources. And um, please, if you do use them in class, please let me know how you get on. I love hearing how the children are enjoying using these resources in class. And if you've got any pictures of the children using any of our resources, please share them with the Primary Languages Network. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>